To bring all these pieces together, let's talk about advertising. Now, all advertising is, is you bringing attention to your product or service. It could be a particular product, it could be a particular service, or it could be your company in general. You know, spreading the word that your company exists. So advertising is a marketing strategy that involves promoting a product, service, or idea to a target audience using various forms of media. I'm only going to discuss online marketing in this lesson. Just know that there are a ton of different ways for you to advertise. And you know, advertising in itself is a career field, so there's tons of options and we're gonna go into that a little bit further, but I am going to take a deep dive into online marketing. So once again, I'm gonna talk about your target audience. So before creating an advertising campaign, it's important to define the target audience which again is the specific group of people who are most likely to be interested in your product or service. This can include factors such as age, gender, income, locations, interest, and more. And we already talked about this a little bit, but I'm gonna give you an example because your product can be for, let's say, women between the ages of 30 and 40 who are stay-at-home moms. But you can you know, start to create advertising that is towards only specific pieces of your target audience. For example, Maybe this time you're just gonna target, you know, stay at home moms. And the next time you're gonna target stay at home moms at a particular age range. Or maybe you have a different service that is for women who work from home. So you're going to create an advertisement that targets them specifically. So if your product can be applied to pretty much the same demographic, you can create multiple advertisements. Now I'll give you another example. This small business academy can be for a variety of small businesses. Now I have my target audience and what I can do is I can take that target audience and then create advertisements based on the type of small business they might own. So one advertisement might be for personal trainers who own their own training business. Another advertisement might be for, you know, another type of small business. Let's say it's a nail salon. So I can create advertisements that are tailored toward different types of small businesses and small businesses are a part of my target audience. Now let's talk about USP, which uh, this has come up already, but it's a unique selling proposition. So which is a feature or benefit of your product or service that sets it apart from the competition. I call this your point of differentiation. This can be used as a key selling point in your advertising. So. If you're veteran owned or if you are you know, doing things differently compared to your competitors, you're gonna use this in your advertising. Next is going to be your message. The advertising message should be clear, concise, and compelling. It should communicate the USP or your point of differentiation and appeal to the emotions and needs of the target audience. I wanna really talk about the emotion piece. There, is something in marketing called our three desires. Most people seek wealth, relationships, or status. So basically, you want your advertisement to tell people, hey, my business does this, we're different because of this, and I can help you achieve this. That is the key piece of advertising. You wanna make sure you make it very apparent to your target audience that you are going to be solving a problem with your product. And more specifically, you're going to be solving a problem for them. So let's move on to the next definition, which is media. There are various forms of media, as we all know, that can be used for advertising, including television, radio, print, outdoors, which can be billboards, bus stops, um, things like that digital media, which will be social media, search engine advertising, and more. Choosing the right media depends on the target audience, budget, and advertising goals. So I'll give an example for this. Some of my clients are, you know, not on social media. They are too busy. They have employees who manage the company's social media. So I'm not really going to try and find them through social media ads. I would be more reluctant to maybe take out a radio advertisement. You know, a lot of my Fortune 500 clients are not watching TV. They're out and about doing things. And for me, what I found most successful was to put up advertisements at local golf clubs because a lot of my, you know, CEOs and business owners have a lot of free time because they have employees that manage things and they spend their free time doing things that they enjoy, such as golfing. So you really have to figure out 
where is your target audience, right? You need to bring your cust- your company in front of them. You need to bring, you know, your products and services in front of your customers. Next is budget, and I highly recommend that you determine what your advertising budget is. So advertising costs can vary widely depending on the media used, target audience, and other factors. It's important to set a budget and allocate resources accordingly to achieve the desired advertising goals. Now, advertising is a tax deduction. However, it is limited, so you want to make sure that you are really looking at where is your your target audience, how much capital do you have set aside for advertising? And if you don't, take a look at your finances and see, you know, how much you can pay to advertise. And the key thing here is however much money you put into your advertising, that's how much money you should be making back. So if you only spend $100 a month in advertising, you should be making at least $100 off of those ads. And if you're not, then you need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what exactly you're doing wrong and why is your advertisement not capturing and converting those viewers or the people who are clicking on your advertisement. So let's go into metrics because the next thing you will need to do is you'll need to figure out, you know, is your advertisement successful? So it's important to track and measure the effectiveness of your advertising campaigns using metrics such as reach, frequency, impressions, click-through rates, and conversion rates. This can help you optimize future campaigns and maximize returns on investment. So you want to make sure you have some sort of measurable you know, item. So for me, I want to make sure that 10% of my clicks on social media ads turn into paying customers. So if there's 100 clicks, I hope to get 10 paying customers out of there. So if I'm only paying $100 a month in advertising, I want to make sure those 10 clicks equal $100 or more, meaning the number of people who purchase my products the will pay for the advertising in itself. So I build in advertising to the production cost. This way I can keep my cost low and you know customers and I keep my target audience can afford my product. So you want to make sure you have some sort of way to measure the success or failures of your advertisements. And I highly recommend that the second you have an advertisement on display, that you check it every single day. And if it's not working, do things like, you know, change the headline if you can, or make changes to the, to the target audience if you're able to go into, you know, the social media account or the, the Google advertisement and change your demographic a little bit to see if that will help. Because you want to make sure that you are maintaining, you know, your metrics and that you're hitting your goals but you don't want to put an advertisement out there for too long and realize that it's not working. So these are just a few of the different types of advertising. So we have television advertising. This involves creating and airing commercials on television networks and channels. This has become a lot easier, so you might not be able to put an advertisement on commercials, you know, through cable television, but Putting up commercials on YouTube and on Netflix and things like that, they're a lot easier these days. Print advertising, so this includes advertising in newspapers, magazines, brochures, flyers, and other print media. I love this type of media because that combined with direct mail advertising, which I'll discuss at the bottom of the list there, um, really brings in, um, at least for me, my target audience. Next will be radio advertising, so this is creating air ads on radio and podcasts, so keep that in mind. Outdoor advertising, so this is going to be your billboards, your posters, banners, and other forms of advertising. Now that a lot of billboards, especially here on the, you know, on the West Coast and on the East Coast, are becoming digital, so they can display multiple advertisements, it's a lot cheaper now to put your ad on on the billboards because you can put a 10 second, 15 second, even a minute ad on a billboard um, for a fraction of the cost compared to what it used to be. Then we have online advertising, so this is going to be digital ads that can be displayed on websites, social media platforms, search engines, and other online you know, channels. So depending on what your industry is, I would recommend you know, Googling exactly what you know, market you're in. So if you are, let's say, a bakery, if you Google bakery or you know, ingredients for baking or whatever, and you find these blog posts and you go to the blog and you see that there's advertisements all over the page you can reach out to that website and say, hey, I would like to advertise on your page. You know, even even supermarkets allow advertisements. So if you are a bakery and you want to advertise, 
at a store or in the neighborhood, that is a great way to market. Next we have mobile advertising. So this involves creating ads that can be displayed on mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. This can be, you know, um, for example, like if you go to any of the app games, even Solitaire, any of the games that folks can download off of the app store that aren't the paid versions, or maybe they're paid versions and only and have fewer ads, you can reach out to the manufacturer and the creator of that app and ask to advertise. It's super simple. You just go to the app store or Google Play, you see who the app is created by, and there's usually contact information on there or a website you can go to, and you just reach out to them directly, assuming that's your target audience. So if you're, you know, if you are an author of a children's book and you want to target their parents and the children with your book, you can go and download some of, you know, the top 10 um, kids games and put your company or put your book on those apps so it's seen by parents and the children and then they want that and then they click on it and then they buy your stuff. I've actually done this a few times. I invested in a software development company and our target market was college kids and a lot of college kids use study apps. So what we did was we went to Quora and Course Hero and we put out advertisements over the course of you know a few months and the advertisements paid for themselves tenfold because we looked to find out where our target audience was, where is our market, and we put our advertisements in front of them. Next, you have native advertising. This is a type of advertising that is designed to blend in with the content of a website or a publication. Now, I talk about this a little bit in my marketing class, so I'm gonna give you guys a brief understanding of what this might be. So native advertising is more than just you having a website, because in its purest form, that is what native advertising is. It is simply just being on the internet. However, if you have a blog post or a podcast or whatever the case is, you want to make sure that keywords in that blog post or in the description of that podcast are hyperlinked. This will help optimize your website on search engines, so make your website more relevant, but also it'll help, help people navigate. So if I'm looking for a bakery or if I'm looking for, you know, flour and I see your blog post because you own a bakery that talks about the different types of flour and flour substitutes and I'm reading that blog article and I see there's a bunch of hyperlinks to other ingredients or other bake, you know, baked goods and I click on those hyperlinks, I'm going to be taken to other parts of your website. Now I'm clicking around your website and I'm extremely interested and I can, you know, go ahead and figure out, you know, what, what product or service are they selling? Because you've got me hooked. You've provided value. You put yourself in front of me, meaning that you created a more relevant website. And that's what brought me here. And now I, I can see you know what you're talking about and I want to purchase your service. So that's kind of the thought process you want to go through when you're picking out an advertisement is, you know, what do I want my target audience to feel and think and how am I going to help them trust me and trust me enough to sign up for my email list or purchase my services? So let's move on to direct mail marketing. So this is physical mail. So whenever you receive circulars or anything like that, you know, if you think that your target audience is someone who reads those, then I recommend, you know, taking out direct mail advertising because it's gotten a lot cheaper over the years especially now with QR links that you can add to your advertisements. You don't even have to create a big flyer or anything like that. You can take out a small ad, throw a QR code in there and reach your target audience. Next is product placement. This involves featuring a product or brand in a television show, movie, or other form of media. And I'm actually gonna talk a little bit about this because this is an ingenious way to advertise your company. So whenever you are watching a TV show and you see a name brand products anywhere in that scene or if the you know character is holding it that company has paid the television show to put their product in their in their show so and then the the opposite works if you see a product that you know that label you know that brand but the brand is cut out or it's a fake name but it looks identical that's because the show wanted to use that product but the advertisement you know the company didn't pay for the advertisement so they you know change the label there's actually teams of set people who are in charge of product placement and, and you know in charge of designing all of the items that the character holds throughout the tv show so if you have a physical product i highly recommend this 
when I wrote my first book, The End of Dieting, I actually sent a few copies to a couple studios that were, you know, general health and wellness shows. So by them just having this book in the background, that was a, you know, indirect, subtle form of advertising. And last is going to be celebrity endorsements. This involves using celebrities to promote a product or brand. This might be somewhat difficult unless you happen to know um, a celebrity or someone with a, you know, really high following. But generally now we look to online advertising and finding, you know, the quote unquote social media influencers to promote our product. I generally don't go that route only because um, I find that at any moment in time, if that individual does something or announces something that I don't think aligns with the principles of my company, then it hurts my brand. So if I'm trying to promote something that let's say is about, you know, adopt, don't shop, I help animal shelters. And if I want to promote a fundraising campaign and I go to this influence and say, hey, I'd really appreciate it if you announce this, you know, I'll give you, I'll pay you to announce this campaign to raise money for, for, you know, animal shelters. They say, absolutely. You know, and then six months, they take a picture of the puppy they just purchased from a breeder. That doesn't align with my morals and the principles of my company and of my campaign to raise money for animal shelters. And now it puts a hinder on my brand, but you can't control what that other person does after, you know, your agreement has ended. So just be very weary and just make sure that you are very familiar with the the belief system and the principles of the celebrity or social media influencer that you are looking to promote your product. It can be very messy. So let's talk a little bit about online marketing. And I want to go over the terms because I think there are uh, a lot of terms that are thrown around and some of us don't really know exactly what that means. Let's start with SEO or search engine optimization. So search engine optimization is the process of optimizing a website's content and structure to improve its visibility in search engine results pages. This is probably one of the most volatile ways to market online, but it's necessary. Google and other search engines change their their algorithm all the time. So if you have videos on YouTube, you can go from having a million views on every video to no views. And that's because they change the algorithm. They change the way things are working because they're getting information real time from their key customers. And their key customers are going to be the viewers if they're on YouTube and the people who are searching things on Google. So if your company is doing things in a particular way and Google says, hey, we need to change things because our searchers and our users look like they want to go this way, then they change it. And you can go from on the first page to the last page in a matter of seconds because they changed the algorithm. And this is done intentionally. They're trying to create the, the best user experience they can. And if that requires them to change the algorithm, then they change the algorithm. They don't care about the collateral damage that it does to the individual companies because you're not their client. Their client are the people who are using their platform and their clients are the people who are paying for advertising. So keep that in mind, but I highly recommend you look into SEO and you look into how to improve the search engine optimization of your page because there are some key pieces that won't change like backlinks and adding hyperlinks to blog posts and adding hyperlinks all over your page. And, you know, there's tons of ways to keep your page relevant, even if Google changes the algorithm. Next, let's talk about pay-per-click or PPC advertising. This is really popular in Google and on um, Instagram, but PPC involves placing paid ads on search engine results pages or other websites and paying a fee each time someone clicks on the ad. Now this has changed just a little bit. So they'll charge you a certain fee just to run the ad. And then they'll charge you an additional fee every time someone clicks on this ad. And then you can set, you know, a cap. I only want to spend a hundred dollars. So they'll cut you off at a hundred dollars, but they might charge you, let's say a dollar a day and then 50 cents a click. So you're going to pay that dollar a day minimum. And then every time someone clicks on your ad, you're going to pay 50 cents. So that's why it's really important to make sure that you are 
attracting your target audience and people that you think are actually going to purchase your product and services. Otherwise, you're paying for clicks that aren't going anywhere. Next is going to be social media marketing. Talked a little bit about this. So that's going to be involving, you know, social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, and whatever else to promote your product and service. Next, we have content marketing. This involves creating and sharing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a target audience. This can be like your email list. This can be blog posts. I highly recommend that you are providing value in some form. Moving on, so we have email marketing, which involves sending promotional messages or newsletters to a list of subscribers via email. I talked about this already. Affiliate marketing, which involves promoting a product or service and earning a commission for each sale made through a unique affiliate link. So I'll touch on this just a little bit because I think this is one of the one of the better forms of online marketing. Basically, if you have an affiliate or let's say like a brand ambassador and every time someone purchases your service, they get a cut and vice versa. The best type of partnerships, especially affiliates, you know, affiliate partnerships is the one where both people or both parties are compensated in some way. So let's say you are a personal trainer, you have an affiliate marketing, you know, um, partnership with the gym. Maybe it's the gym that you train at, or maybe you're an online trainer, but you have a, um, a, an affiliate partnership with, uh, one of your local gyms. And every time, you know, maybe the gym puts up advertising for you, or maybe every time the gym posts something on social media, they put a link to your page saying, looking for online trainers, here's your online trainer. Now you will be in competition with the other trainers at that gym, but it's a win-win. So maybe every time someone signs up through, let's say you have a Planet Fitness affiliate partnership, every time someone clicks on your link from a Planet Fitness post, let's say Planet, Planet Fitness will get you know, 20% of that sale. Influencer marketing, I talked about this already. This is gonna be partnering with an influential person or you know, content creator on social media. Video marketing involves creating and sharing videos to promote a product or service. I talked about this when we talked about YouTube. Mobile marketing, again, that's going to involve reaching out to customers through their mobile devices. This can be text message and push notifications, but honestly, no one really likes that. <laughs> um, so I would, you know, kind of lean towards the in-app advertising. Then we have display advertising, which involves placing banner ads on websites or apps to promote a product or service. Just be careful again about the the websites and apps that you choose because you want to make sure that they align with the, the mission of your business. So that's it for advertising. I just wanted to mention what advertising is, talk a little bit about online marketing, but this should be something that's on your mind. Now, because of all the unique features of advertising, it's really hard to get into advertising and each types of advertising and marketing because, you know, your target audience is going to dictate you know exactly how you carry out your marketing strategies and your advertising technique. So keep it in the back of your mind. If you need any help with your advertising strategy, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, this is one of my favorite things to talk about and something that I'm actually really good at when it comes to promoting products and services.